Hello, everyone. Hope you are well on this Tuesday night. I believe we have a huge growing powder keg in the Middle East, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, escalating more and more. I will go into that a little bit more here. It is concerning for sure. Also, I have a very good verse, a really good passage that I want to share with you. So stay tuned for that towards the end of the video. But first, real quick, I want, and I don't say this enough, I want to thank you for watching the channel. If nothing else, you view the channel. Now, if you hit the like button, subscribe, that's bonus. That's awesome. I, I, I really appreciate it. It helps us out. But by viewing, you know, watching the videos, it helps us. And I think right now we're up to 17,500 or something, roughly. So we've had steady organic growth still on this channel. And we keep growing. So and without you, we wouldn't have a channel here. So again, thank you very much. All right. I want to start with the, yeah, like I said in the opening, we the Middle East is super concerning because for a while there, I was thinking, well, it's just going to muddle on and kind of go away. But here of late, my concern is renewed for sure. OK, uh, but I want to start first with a couple of quick updates, some news items that I saw here. Um, UPS, UPS, the shipping giant, is cutting 12,000 jobs. This is six months after the largest ever uh, union pay raises. The, uh, the leadership is saying that they have to cut one billion dollars of annual cost. And they said they've uh, they've had a slump in demand at home here in the United States in North America and abroad. That's big. That's a pretty good. That's a that's a pretty large number. Twelve thousand jobs, y'all, for UPS. I didn't expect that. That's a that's kind of a surprise. And here we go. I'm not surprised at this next story. The NSA, the National Security Agents of the United States agency of the United States has been accused of buying American internet browsing data without warrants. Well, I'm not surprised at that. You know, it's just, it's sad. It really is sad. We just want to be left alone, don't we? We just want to be left alone. We just want to live our lives and raise our families, go to work, practice our faith. You know, We'll even pay our taxes if you just leave us alone. We don't want to do that, but we'll do it if we can just live in peace here. That's the way I look at it, at least. All right. Biden on the border crisis when asked about the when talking about the border crisis. This was today earlier. I saw this soundbite. He said, quote, I've done all I can do. Just give me the power. Give me the border patrol. Give me people, the judges, people who can stop this. Dude, you can stop this. What a complete idiot. What a com what complete dog squeeze. This is total dog squeeze. We know this. I mean, and the sad thing is, a lot of people that watch this will believe it. They'll fall for it. <clears throat> You're the president of the United States. It's... You could take action and stop this tomorrow, today, tonight. At least make big steps towards it at the very least. He says, I've done all I can do. Lie. Give me the power. You got the power. Give me the Border Patrol. You got the Border Patrol, but you're using them to just process illegals as they come in. Not using them properly. Give me the people. You got all the people you need. The judges. I ain't even going to go there. The people who can stop this. Complete, utter idiocy. Complete. I, you know, when I, when I see video like that and just quotes like and watch him do this, it's just I, I, I shake my head and I, I, I'm, it's like I don't know what else to say. I, I, I'm without words at times. Really, what do you, what do you say? What do you do with this? And I didn't realize till last night, I, or yesterday, late afternoon that the um, the three Americans that were killed the other day the other night in Jordan on that uh, the border of Jordan and Syria at a US base were uh, the three killed there were from Georgia 
And I didn't know that. And uh, two were females. And I'm y'all have probably seen you know coverage of it by now, but it was two females, one male. They were all army reservists sitting in a camp. Or they, this this drone hit their living quarters. on the border of Jordan and Syria. One was 23 years old. One female was 23. The other female was 24 years old. Kids, basically. And the male was uh, a sergeant, 46 years old. It's a dang shame, man. It's a shame. And, you know, if we're going it, to... It angers me in a way. But, I mean, if we're going to be there, at least protect the folks there. And go after the ones who fired on them instead of hitting empty warehouses and symbolic stuff. Oh, we made an airstrike. Well, big deal, man. I mean, it's not evidently it's not doing anything to deter any more responses. You know, and I, and it makes me think back, and I, and I know I upset people when I say this, but it makes me think about the 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 previous administration. Did we have this problem? I don't remember. I don't remember having this problem for the with the previous administration. You know why? Because it was strong leadership. Yeah, he's got his flaws. They all have their flaws, but strong leadership. He would tell you know these these countries like <clears throat> Iran, Persia, basically, Russia, China. They understand one thing. They understand strength, and he would tell them in no uncertain terms. If you think about or harm one U.S. service personnel, we will you will regret it. We will do 10 times worse on you. And he meant it. And what happened? What happened? Nothing. Did you notice that? Nothing. Strength. I tell you, peace through strength. Now we have war through weakness. That's what we have right now. And it's about to escalate. And there's a dang powder keg right now. And all it takes is one match to light it up. And my concern is it's about to be lit. Maybe later tonight or in the next 24 hours. Because they're saying they're going to have a big response to these um, to these three U.S. Uh, pers uh, personnel that were killed the other night. Who knows? They may just hit some more empty warehouses. But you know what that does? That invites even more attacks because when they show weakness like this it only encourages it emboldens the enemy and i've said it before maybe we shouldn't even be over in these bases but if we're going to be there at least protect them and and do something about the attacks hello there's i saw a report earlier tonight that said there's 160 attacks since like october and what are we doing about it? Surely we have the power, you know. One of the good things about being a superpower is you get to be a superpower at times. <laughs> you know, you have the capability, man. Come on, man. I don't get it. Maybe it's all part of a plan. I don't know, by the powers that shouldn't be. It's pretty evident that they want a war. And WW3, we're pretty much in one now. Because of weak leadership, we're about to be at war directly with Iran, with Persia. That's the way it looks to me. I think there's a high probability of it. I mean, if I were in the, the, the driver's seat at this point, I would at least, at the very least, carry out a massive sustained campaign to take out at least the proxies. These Houthi dudes, man, come on. Do something about that, at the very least. That'd be a start, wouldn't it? I tell you, talk about a powder keg. <clears throat> and you know who's watching, don't you? Mm -hmm. Mr. Putin, he's watching. He's taking notes. And who else is watching? 
the dude in China, he's watching and taking notes as well. Maybe they're having a little meeting about it. It's got to embolden them. It wouldn't me if I'm in their shoes. I'm like, dang, if we're going to do something, we got to do something about it this year. This guy's weak as I don't know what. He don't know where he's going. Literally doesn't know where he's going. He has to be guided to the car. Literally. <laughs> what a better time to do something. Take your shot at the, at the, at the top dog, America. Now would be the time. <laughs> you know? It's really something to watch. It's really uh, concerning and frightening at, at the same time. We should not be afraid, though. Whenever I say that or feel that, I am reminded that we are not given a spirit of fear. You know, and as Christians, um, I heard it said, I was watching a video. I can't remember who now. I can't remember who it was in my research. And I re we were watching some videos a while ago. And uh, this guy said, as Christians, we should be the most prepared and least afraid people because others are watching us too. Non-Christians are watching us. And if they watch us be afraid and frantic and in a panic, what are they going to think? We have nothing to offer them. We have nothing, no way to help them or guide them either. And we're not being an example, you know, when we are human though, you know, we're human, we're flawed. But anyway, these are just my thoughts right now. Uh, I'm going to keep following this, of course, especially in the Middle East. Um, and, and with any super breaking news, I will come on, if at all possible, and keep you guys updated. And, of course, give you my take on it. Give you my take, the dog take. Hmm. All right, I'm going to go to the passage here. It is a good one, of course. It is from Mark. It is from Mark chapter 13, verse 33. It says, be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. Talking about Jesus' return. Amen. It's kind of encouraging just to read that, isn't it? I'm going to read it again. Be on guard, keep awake. So many people are not awake, are they? So many people just walk around out there tomorrow and look around for a while. Everybody's doing this. They're walking, they're literally walking around like this. Like robots. Stay awake. For you do not know when the time will come. We should be waiting in anticipation. Eager with anticipation. I know. I'm preaching to the choir here. I know. I realize that. But isn't it cool though? Because we know we're promised and we know it's going to come. We just don't know exactly when, do we? But we will keep watching and be watchful. All right. I hope that was helpful. Uh, there's a lot of folks, uh, a, a big need for uh, for prayer. Uh, continue with your prayer request. If you've been giving, uh, asking for a prayer request, we definitely are praying for you. Give us updates in the comments, and um, we would appreciate it. We just want to know. We we'll keep keep praying, of course, for you. Um, if we do not respond every single time, do know, please understand, we do read all the comments, okay? So uh, if you don't see a response or a timely response, just know we still, we are reading it. We are, we, we get to all of them, okay? It just takes us a minute sometimes, all right? All right, well, share your thoughts. Let's continue to keep our preparations up. Do not be afraid. And let's be careful out there. God bless you. I will see you soon.